In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? In Genesis chapter 18, in God's word, verse 14, Is anything too hard for the Lord? For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good, and gave us rain from heaven, and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and glad gladness, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him, and find him though he be not far from every one of us. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. For by him were all things created, that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers. All things were created by him and for him. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Next, I'm going to go to and give you from the Bible, Acts chapter 10, uh, 
To him give all the prophets witness, that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth, transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And to read that verse again from 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. First John chapter 5, verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. 